The Golden Globe Awards were Sunday, which are like the Oscars and the Emmys in one, where they hand out awards for both TV shows and movies. But of course, Hollywood award shows aren't really for awards. They themselves are elaborate propaganda campaigns, whose winners are often chosen not because of their extraordinary talent, but because certain songs, movies, and TV shows promote agendas the social engineers want to encourage. Movies that fail miserably at the box office and shows on Netflix nobody's ever heard of are often heaped with awards when the Hollywood elite want to highlight their powerful message. But something unique happened at this year's Golden Globe Awards, which I'll get into in a little bit. In recent years, the award shows have veered further left than most people could imagine, and it's impossible to make it through one now without getting browbeat by nauseating messages about diversity and illegal immigration propaganda, anti-whiteism, and of course, drag queens. For example, the 2018 Emmys began with a couple Saturday Night Live cast members saying that tonight is a celebration of the hard work and talent of everyone in this room, and then they mentioned the word of the day. We're also celebrating the fact that this year's Emmy Awards has the most diverse group of nominees in Emmy history. It seemed like they may have been setting up a joke for a second, but they were really being serious. A few more celebrities then came out on stage and they literally began to sing a song celebrating the diversity of the nominees. Halfway through their little musical number, Ricky Martin entered the stage saying, you haven't solved it, this song is way too white. And then the music changed to salsa music and they all started dancing again. At that point, Saturday Night Live's Andy Sandberg joined the group and sings, asking if there's any room in the song for a straight white guy like him, and he's told no, and then shooed from the stage. Well, you can't be a part of that. Yeah, sounds good. Have fun, you guys. <laughs> when Jimmy Kimmel came up to present, he began by mentioning the word of the day. I know I speak for you, Tracy, when uh, we, we say we are delighted this year to have such a diverse collection of talented supporting actress nominees. <laughs> Another presenter, Amelia Clark, best known for starring in HBO's Game of Thrones, also had to mention the word of the day, saying this. Tonight, we are happy to announce that the comedy writing category, once dominated by white male nerds, now boasts more female and diverse nerds than ever before. Yeah! <laughs> But there were still too many white people winning awards, despite the diverse group of nominees that night. So, in protest when James Gordon was presenting, he told the audience at home to get hashtag Emmys so white trending on Twitter, which of course they did. And we can't have an award show these days without it including a celebration of drag queens. So, RuPaul was given the Emmy for his cross-dressing competition show, RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes, that's what Hollywood thinks is the best competition show on television. The Golden Globes is put on by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, which is an organization consisting of foreign media outlets and reporters who cover American entertainment outside of the United States. It's the typical superficial award show with celebrities who think that they could save the world by giving a shout out to various causes. But once Donald Trump became president, it was obligatory for at least one of the winners to denounce him while accepting their award. Meryl Streep was the first at the 2017 Golden Globes, held just two months after the 2016 election, where she gave an overly dramatic speech about how Donald Trump is ruining the country for immigrants. The following year, feminism was the theme of the night, with host Seth Meyers beginning the show by saying this. People in this room were worked really hard to get here, but it's clearer now than ever before that the women had to work even harder. So thank you for all the amazing work that you've all done and you continue to do. I look forward to you leading us into whatever comes next. So thank you so much for letting me say that. Thank you for letting me say that. <laughs> there was an award for the biggest beta male, it definitely would have went to him. The first award that night, however, went to a man named Rami Youssef, who won Best Actor in a Comedy Series. And as soon as he took the stage to accept his award, he admitted this. Look, I know you guys haven't seen my show. Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> Everyone's like, is this an editor? Um... The funny thing is, he wasn't joking, because nobody there, and hardly anybody at home, knew who he was. His show, Rami, streamed on Hulu and was a comedy about a Muslim family from Egypt who had just moved to New Jersey. He was given a Golden Globe as a form of affirmative action to demonstrate how woke Hollywood is by celebrating a Muslim comedy 
not because it was the funniest show, or even funny at all, but simply for the sake of diversity, and he knew it. At the 2020 Golden Globes, Ellen DeGeneres was given an award for excellence for all the work that she had done to advance the LGBT ABCDFG plus agenda. The dinner, which takes place before the show, was an all-vegan meal that year to help raise awareness about climate change. And when Joaquin Phoenix won the award for Best Actor for his performance in Joker, he began his acceptance speech by thanking the Hollywood Foreign Press Association for recognizing and acknowledging the link between animal agriculture, <laughs> aka eating meat, and climate change. He added that it's a very bold move making tonight plant-based and it really sends a powerful message, <laughs> referencing the vegan dinner. While Sasha Baron Cohen was presenting, he took the opportunity to rip into Mark Zuckerberg for not cracking down on free speech enough on Facebook. Two months earlier, Cohen gave a speech at the ADL where he demanded the social media companies increase censorship because people were posting things that hurt his and others' feelings. Then, during her acceptance speech for Best Actress in a Limited Series, Michelle Williams, who was visibly pregnant, admitted that she once killed her baby in an abortion, and she was glad that she did it because if she had the kid, it would have prevented her from becoming a successful actress. Of course, the audience cheered for her bravery for admitting what she had done. Award shows have been hemorrhaging viewers every year for probably the last decade. The Oscars lost half their viewers last year from the previous year, but the Golden Globes, which were held this Sunday, lost all their viewers. Nobody watched it, literally nobody, because NBC refused to air it because there aren't enough black people in the Hollywood Foreign Press Association who are given voting rights to decide which TV shows and movies win. Seriously, NBC canceled the <laughs> award show because there are too many white people involved and no other network picked it up, no celebrities showed up, there was no host. Technically, they they still announced who they decided were the winners, but nobody was really there and nobody cares. And thank God, because as a media analyst, it's kind of my job to watch and report on these events, but I don't know if I can do it anymore. 10 or 20 years ago, they weren't quite as bad, but the same predictable formula plays out every year now. TV shows and movies that reinforce the cultural Marxist hegemony the establishment wants to maintain are hailed as amazing pieces of art, while wholesome family entertainment is ignored. The award shows these days are mostly just a celebration of degeneracy. Thankfully, with the limitless choices of on-demand entertainment, we can opt out of what mainstream networks are producing and promoting and watch whatever we want. But even that's getting more difficult with the Marxists poisoning popular franchises, including cartoons, which they're now using to promote drag queens to children. Of course, there are always books, and if you like my more serious monologues here on YouTube, then you'll love my books. So order my latest one, Hollywood Propaganda, How TV, Movies, and Music Shape Our Culture in paperback from Amazon.com, or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores onto your tablet or your phone. My book Books are a lot more serious and in-depth and hardcore than my videos, which I have to tone down quite a bit for obvious reasons. So head on over to Amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.